you should see you should see his hair this morning. It looks like a sort of dead mouse has landed on his head. There's been an earthquake in Corinth. The city has been devastated by a large shift in the Telemachos fault which underlies the area. Our d disaster correspondent Roger Blatt is on the line now. Roger, what now punctures the sky like the shattered teeth of some gi giant vanquished boxer? A line of broken tower blocks now punctures the sky like the shattered teeth of some giant vanquished boxer. A boxer whose face has been punched to pieces from the inside. Just 12 hours ago, this historic city, which since landing here this morning, I've come to regard as my home, was blissfully unaware that the mighty bank of the Telemachus Fault was about to call in its terrible loan. That bill contained not only the vast debt of destruction, not only the massive compound interest of falling buildings and cracks in the ground, but the inevitable surcharge of severed limbs, crushed bone, and diabolical pain. All around me now, the air is bothered by the cries of the bereaved and injured. That is the sound of a bereaved, and this is the sound of an injured. On the hour. News of when the earth moves, even if it means having to move the earth. Well, what exactly happens when an earthquake of this size strikes? I'm joined now in the studio by our expert, Edward Crane. Well, the essential building blocks of an earthquake are pretty much like this. Here are two tectonic plates. Here is a landmass which immediately overlies them. And this pencil is a city built on top of the landmass. Now here is what happens when the earthquake starts. First of all, the plates begin to push against each other. This causes a strain to build up. Here it is. And soon, the plates begin to chafe. The ground leaps and bucks like a dog biting an electric fence. Solid concrete is shattered. Gas pipes burst to cause explosions. And very shortly, the entire city is completely destroyed. And so, what happens to the inhabitants? Well, if the population is represented by these mice and a hole in the ground by this vacuum cleaner, then this is what happens. News quake. And back to Roger Blatt now in Corinth. Roger, I believe the first of the leading backbench politicians with an independent program of personal aid has just arrived. Yes, it's Paul Terrace, and he's standing beside me now. Mr. Terrace, you're tipped to become a minister in the next cabinet reshuffle if you maintain a high enough public profile. Why are you here? Right. Well, first of all, I'm extremely glad you've asked me that question. Thanks. What I want to get quite clear about this is that my presence here has nothing to do with me, the politician, and everything to do with me, the person. The politics don't matter a flying, slippery swig. And what me, the person's got to do right now is plunge headfirst into this mess and pull Johnny Greek out of it. How are you going to do that? By giving out parcels. Every one of my parcels contains a clean suit and a brand new toothbrush. How's a clean suit and a toothbrush going to help? What you've got to understand is that these people's lives have been shattered. They've got to rebuild them from scratch. And that's a hell of a task. I can tell you, because I had to rebuild my own life once, and I know I wouldn't have got anywhere at all had I not had about me at all times a clean suit and a brand new toothbrush. With that, you're ready for anything. Look at this man here. He's a bloody mess. You're a bloody mess, aren't you? Yes, you are, but I know what you're saying. You're saying, give me a clean suit and a brand new toothbrush, and I'm ready for anything. Well, don't worry, I'm here. Leave him alone, he's mine. Good God. All That's Philip Skane, your main bad. rival for the cabinet They're appointment. Bad. Well, kiss my bad. bloody neck. Mr. Skane is distributing his parcels at the moment. They each contain a roll-on deodorant and a selection of colognes. And with each pressure raw me, I will help these people regain in their they need respect. They need a yeah. suit. Come at you. you He's need approaching a, a victim man. now. God, man, you're absolutely weak. Give him a it's suit. It's a man who's lost yeah. both his arms. Now, yeah. let me rub this fragrance oh, of God. sweet bees into what's left of your armpit. Yeah. You see, the man needs a suit. Don't worry, it always stings at first. Give him a bloody suit. On the hour. 
three-dimensional Quakerama. And as the dust begins to settle on today's catastrophe, the air is already buzzing with recrimination. Critics are saying that much of the destruction could have been avoided. City planners are being asked to justify their decision to build a system of glass motorways and to explain why the foundations of the city's largest buildings were made of crisps. But there is a positive side to this massive natural disaster, and that is the pop singer Barry White, who's flown to Corinth to record some of the victims, to give what he calls an authentic cultural stamp to his brand new record, Earthquake in Your Bed. I know you're a victim. Okay. I can see your grievance. Okay. I can tell because your limp count is hard. Uh -huh. Not even. Okay. I can see your life. Okay. That's the pop singer Barry White and some of the victims of the Corinth earthquake disaster. On the hour, the world in a tablet.